Warren Buffett, the sage of Omaha, is the world's most famous and celebrated investor whose personal wealth consistently ranks in the top five of the world's wealthiest individuals. His annual letter to shareholders is a highly anticipated event in the investment community as both amateur and professional investors around the world hope to glean some of Warren Buffett's sage investment advice in hopes to tap into Warren Buffett's investment mojo. It also helps that Warren Buffett's letter to shareholders is written in layman terms, mostly devoid of the financial, technical jargon and accounting speak. It's almost like getting investment advice from your grandfather, your very rich grandfather. This year's letter to shareholders is quite unique compared to the political atmosphere that is sweeping through the United States, an atmosphere of doubt, fear, and danger. Racial tensions, poverty, social injustice, political infighting, immigration, international relations are just a few of the hot topic items that are frequently reported in the media. It's enough to color anybody in a great sense of dread and despair. But surprisingly, Warren Buffett is optimistic about the United States and its future. Quote, Babies born in America today are the luckiest crop in history. A bold statement for sure considering the popular political statement, make America great again. Warren Buffett will be 87 this year, and with age comes perspective. Warren Buffett has seen America endure through many trying times that are arguably much worse than today. World War II, Vietnam War, Cold War, Civil Rights Movement, Cuban Missile Crisis, Watergate, JFK's assassination, Martin Luther King's assassination, to just to name a few, and enough market crashes, panics, and collapse to last a lifetime. Warren Buffett has seen America endure through all these testing times. It's probably not easy to shake up a man that was inches away from nuclear winter. Warren notes that one of the reasons that America was able to navigate the economic roller coaster better than many other countries because of its economic dynamism an economy that is flexible and able to adapt to the changing economic landscape. Unlike some other countries that depend on one or a few natural resources, such as oil, natural gas, or gold. An economy that isn't controlled or gripped by one political party, entity, or dictator, who molds and shapes the economy to their personal whims. That's not to say that the political institutional apparatus is perfect in the United States, far from it, but at least allows the fostering of new industries and companies such as Google, Facebook, Tesla, and many others. Companies that started small, almost shoebox size, and grew to become international corporations with operations in many countries around the world. This compares to some other countries whose economies are ran by powerful oligarchies, where startups are discouraged and crushed, and as a result, unable to foster new companies in growing industries. They don't have economic dynamism. The United States possesses the ingredients for economic dynamism. Americans have combined human ingenuity, a market system, and a tide of talented and ambitious immigrants and the rule of law to deliver abundance beyond any dreams of our forefathers. I think many people discount these facets of the American economy simply because they're used to having it and it's all they know. Immigrants who come from war-torn or corrupt countries instantly recognize how important these ingredients are to shaping a dynamic economy. Warren goes on to point out it's this economic dynamism that transformed Americans' barren lands, primitive structures, and meager outputs of 1776 into 75 million owner-occupied homes, bountiful farmlands, the 260 million vehicles, the hyper-productive factories, the great medical centers, and the talent-filled universities. It's this economic dynamism that attracts talent around the world to come to the United States. They know they will have the opportunity to learn and to compete. Now, they might not be able to compete on completely equal grounds with the wealthy or the well-connected, but they can at least compete. That's more than you can say for many countries out there. These talented, intelligent, and hardworking individuals that choose to call America home inject America with new ideas and new ways of thinking, which in turn results in new and exciting companies that help make America's economy dynamic. It's not luck that San Francisco, LA, and New York are the birthplace of some of the hottest and most innovative companies out there. The United States went from an agrarian economy, a time when cotton was important enough to go to war over, to a manufacturing economy where Henry Ford famously implemented the assembly line technique for mass production, to a service and technology economy home to the likes of Apple, IBM, Oracle, Intel, and many others. Not many countries are able to make so many economic shifts and pivots to adapt with the times. So I can see why Warren Buffett is optimistic about America's economic future. Change is guaranteed as much as rocky roads, but America will adapt just like she has done in the past.